Hey folks, welcome back to Dominion 6. I'm playing as Early Age Ermor. Alright, so we are currently engaged in a war with Machaka after mostly winning, mostly winning a war with Marverni. I mean, we've... Marverni, I think, are pretty much gone. They've just got this one last... This one last province here that's under siege by uh, Machaka. And, yeah, we're looking pretty strong everywhere else. Oh, yeah, I built a couple of assassins, didn't I? Now, these guys are pretty good, right? Uh, assassinations you can use to kill commanders if you kit these guys out with gear they can be really really good so and we've got loads of magic we've got loads and loads and loads of uh magic weapon uh, so magic gems tons and tons of them like just kicking around uh, apart from we don't have a whole lot of death gems although our death gem in uh, income has increased now I've probably got better things to do with death gems now than make magic items for th uh, for the, for assassins but we could do some cool stuff with assassinations, uh, so this might be some fun stuff to play with. It's one of the thing, one of one of the little tool, tools that Ermo gets, and we should make use of it a little bit just to show it off. I think because I like I think assassination games are fun, and also Dominion Six has new you know some new graphics and some new locations for assassinations to take place in, and they are really really good fun. They are really really they they give the game a kind of RPG feel that it didn't really have before, and I think that's really cool. I'd like to see more stuff like that in Dominions. If it's, you know, providing it doesn't distract from the main game too much. But I don't think that they're distracting. I think they're actually really, really good. Uh, okay. Let's see what else we've got. Okay, we're still banging out these uh, fires in jars. They are a really good item for us to be building. Because we want to be, you know, any, any, any one of these fire one mages, for example, that we throw a fire in a jar on, they get a free gem, for example. So they could, they can immediately go up to, they can cast... Uh, phoenix power and phoenix power is then going to take them up to fire two so just for a meager five gems basically you're turning all your you're turning one of your mages into an, an extra level of mage essentially uh so these that's one of the reasons why these things are really good if you make if you're going to make use of a lot of fire elementals now we've got the ability to, to do fire elementals now the big ones here we are look uh where are we some summon fire elemental so th and this is a big elemental okay this is a big one there's three sizes of fire elemental you get the little you get the baby one uh the lesser fire elemental then you get a medium-sized one that comes with a living fire you get four got four of those uh yeah these are mid-sized fire elementals okay but then if you level five gives you summon fire elemental and this is a single big one and these are quite powerful now the elementals have had a bit of a nerf in dominion six um, I think I forget exactly what it is that they've that has been done to them, but they're not quite as strong as they used to be. Uh, that said, they're still pretty useful. They're still gonna, you know, they're still gonna tear through anything that doesn't like fire. You know, anything that's weak uh, to fire, or e or is even isn't really resistant to fire and doesn't have a magical weapon to be able to attack it. Um, did we go through all of this last time? I think we did, didn't we? Yeah, right. That was it. Uh, I remember now because we he turned up with his uh, pretender, the Netter of Chaos. And uh, yeah, we we forced we forced a route, which was really really cool. Okay, uh, let's get ourselves some province defense up in some of these provinces that we've taken. Uh, yeah, we've got some up there. Uh, Tarkon. Tarkon does not have a lot of troops. I think we need to probably go and take Bergamum here. And have we got a spare commander here? Yeah, we have. Uh, we've got Conicus. We've also got uh, we've also got Katatos. Let's move Conicus into here. Oh, we've got Finfag too. In fact, Finfag's probably a better guy for just shuttling stuff around. Um, we can probably get some uh, some of these guys up, just so that we can we can make use of uh, his his turn time here oh there he's casting he's summoning griffins that's interesting yeah they're gonna they are gonna go to war with us eventually i think let's see if we can get a nap and i don't know whether it's gonna work but we're gonna keep trying and keep proposing a non-aggression pact and uh you know if we when you're proposing a non-aggression pact i don't know how it affects the ai in terms of what you know how it sees you but i'm curious to see yeah i'm, I'm kind of curious to see what it will do there uh, by the way when we've got uh you know earth mages there are stuff that we can create um now yeah we don't can't cast the, make the earth boots we'd need an earth mage too i don't know if any of our is our pretender got earth magic no okay so 
yeah, with the Pretender, I didn't go full Rainbow Mage, I remember now. So uh, we, we don't have much in the way of Earth Magic. That's going to be difficult to break into, I think. Uh, we could Empower, I guess. And that's actually quite easy to do, because we've got a whole bunch. Uh, we could actually get our... Uh, we probably want somebody Empowered who A, isn't going to die of old age quick. Although that's less of a problem now that we've got uh, Death Gems, because we can twice spawn. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Now, the first 50 uh, gems, you need 50 gems to empower to Earth 1. So you're probably be better off empowering somebody who's got Earth gems already. For example, uh, sorry, Earth magic already. This guy's only 36 years old. He'd be a good candidate, I'd say. Remus. Very, uh, a very auspicious name for Ermor, I'd say. Uh, have we got any other Earth mages? I'm pretty sure we had some. Yeah, there'll be, a, there'll be more around somewhere. Got one in Maverni? Yes, Machias. Uh Yeah, maybe we empower one of these guys and so we can get him up to level 2. And then once he's up to level 2, he can create the Earth Boots and that gets us up to level 3. And he can then he can be an Earth Boot creator, basically. Um, you know, so we can get a little bit of Earth Magic. Earth Magic would be really, really good on, on Ermor, especially with some Alteration. We've got a little bit further into Alteration with Earth and, you know, stuff like... Group Stone Skin, that's going to be really good on uh, Emorian troops. Or Group Iron Skin. Or uh, Marble Warriors at level 7. Okay, this is kind of high up now, but Area of Effect 20. And this gives you a, a, nat a base natural protection of 10, up to, a, uh, up to a max of 15, or plus 3 if already higher than, if 12 already and higher. It gives you Cold Susceptibility, but this is a really good spell. Now, this isn't these these protection spells aren't quite as good as they were in Dominions Five because they've got a bit more of a cap on them now. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's let's empower this guy. Let's empower him. It's only going to be thirty Earth gems, and we've got like ten Earth gems a turn. That's three turns of Earth gems. We got ma we got a really big Earth gem income. Very very good. Um, we can also then once he's empowered, we 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 could empower a couple of these guys to be honest. And, you know, we've got that many gems. And then we can start doing Gnome Lore, I think it is, where you, you can just find more Earth gems in the bigger sites. Okay. Uh, Dispatter here. Let me just have a look at what's left of his army. 33 Triarii on the front. We've got... Yeah, he's, his army's in good state, in good position. We don't have many... Com uh, we don't have many... Cavalry. So let's take those cavalry off now. We'll just put them on Guard Commander. I might actually put one of these... Let's put the Equitate of the Sacred Shroud guiding Karmus. Um... Okay. So where do we go? I think Machaka are unlikely to end this siege. Now, we really want a scout here. Let's get ourselves... Let's get ourselves a scout or an, maybe an assassin. Yeah, we can, we can afford an assassin. Let's get an assassin. We'll send an assassin over here and we can just have a look to see how long that's going to take. Um... Okay, send so war in wall integrity is five hundred. I think that's the standard. Yeah, so we're not going to see the. I don't think we'll be able to see the actual wall integrity. I think we can if we get a command if we get a scout in there. So that might be useful. Oh, there's other stuff that we can do by the way. We don't have to do that. Okay. So let's say we wanted to go back to gra grabbing our auger. Uh, we could also let's see if we find. Uh, so it'll be astral spell. Uh, astral projection to do it. The problem is that if there's another astral mage around, and I'm pretty sure that Marverni, yeah, if I know Marverni's got astral mages, the druids are astral. The elder druids, yeah. So, uh, okay, what am I thinking? Let me tell you. So, there's a spell called astral, astral projection, and it allows you to scry this, you know, scry the, the contents of a province very, very well. The problem is that if there's any astral mage you know opposing astral mage enemy astral mage around they will cut your crystal they, they will cut your <laughs> uh silver cord and you know the astral cord that connects the body to the uh, to the astral body and that will that will kill well it will feeble mind your mage basically so if you've got a bunch of cheap mages and you don't mind risking it you can do that but you don't you know you don't really want to do it on any nation that's got astral stuff so i'm pretty sure muspelheim has got astral for example yeah they've got astral so anyone who's got astral magic, you don't want to do it on. Uh, but if they don't have astral, for example, Ulm will not have any astral mages unless they've got it on their pretender. Um, 
I don't, th yeah, these guys as well, Turn and Og do not have Astral. So, for example, I would be reasonably confident in doing an Astral projection. I don't have any Astral Mages here. Yeah, so um, I would be reasonably confident doing, you know, using one of these guys or ladies and doing an Astral projection on Turn and Og, for example. It's got a long range as well. It's a really good spell. The problem is you just got to be careful because you can get... Now, this uh, increases... You can increase the duration. So you can put an, another couple of pearls in if you want to make the the, uh, the the thing last a little bit longer. So you can just see what's going on. I don't need to do that. I don't want to waste gems. But yeah, so there you go. And we now get this like kind of handy little thing telling you where this you know where the spell is going to and that's really really cool whether you whether ritual is pointing at that's such a big change to the uh to stuff uh, in dominions in, in my opinion i really really like that oh we can contact the law a priest of the old faith summons and persuades a law to join the servants of the empire laws are rural spirits and household gods if treated well they'll bring prosperity to the farm where they dwell yeah okay these are really cool so we got loads of nature gems as well we got some nature gems let's let's get some laws up I think those guys have got homesickness, um, or they can't move. I might be, sh I might not be. Yeah, maybe it's it's either homesickness or they can't move, but they are pretty useful. If I remember right, I think they're a nature mage. Let's get her doing that as well. Let's get some Lars up. Um, we got any more nature mages? Yeah, this guy. Get a bunch of Lars. We're going to use those gems up. Um, now we've, we've we've got five per turn. But that's going to give us a whole bunch of free mages, basically. And they might be, they might have to stay in their home province. I'm not really sure about that. In that case, the Ermor, let's just not do that with the Ermor one for the time being. Um, yeah, there's other stuff that she can do. We've got blood magic as well. That's another thing that I'd forgotten about. Uh, blood magic could be quite damn, quite useful, I'd say. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring this bodyguard character up this way. Stop. Probably maybe move her down to Barra, so she's a bit nearer to the front line. Might as well use her. Uh, what do we got here? Okay, Th this is going to be a war against... So we're going to go into uh, Talito here. Let's just prepare this. These are Hastatus, yes. We got a bunch of Hastatus. Uh, we've already got a load of... A lot of these other troops. We've got Triarii, Principes. Okay. And then we're going to move in. We've got uh, mainly Wolf Tribe Warriors, Long Deads, and uh, Wolf Tribe Archers. So that's a kind of deadly combination, right? And you might find that we get some Death Sites here, which will be really, really good for us. Um, but yeah, let's move. Let's move these guys in. I'm also going to take in. Yeah, let's let's put some astral pearls on these on these. Uh... On the uh, crystal priestesses. One would probably do it, to be honest, but we've got so many pearls and um, we've got 16 per turn. I, I can a I can afford to burn a few. And uh, we also want a priest if we've got one. Okay, we don't have many priests. Uh, we've got Augustinus here. He can go in. Um, any priest that we've got, we want to send in. Yeah, these guys are going to be moving in. So priests can banish the long dead. Let's have Vulcanius. In fact, we'll send all those guys in. Okay. So let's see how this is going to go. Uh, we know how it's going to go. We're going to win it. Um, but it just depends on, do we win it with, man, look at this. Got a lot of equities. I don't think we're going to need all of these. That said, it's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt sending a big bunch of them in. Yeah, that's just overkill. We don't need that many. Um, yeah, we'll send them into into groups like that. Um, we'll have the. Is that levees? Yeah, we don't. I don't need the levee here. I'm just gonna let's just um, take those guys off. Just save the or save the levee. Uh, we'll just put the Hastatus on the front line to take you know to to duel to melee with the uh, wolf tribe. They should be okay. Um, we've got Triaria as well. They're also yeah. They probably want to go on the very front. And then what we'll ha what we'll do is we'll have the Equitates of the Sacred Trail going in. Principes can come in and back up the Hastatus. And uh, there we go. We got a bunch of. A bunch of other troops. All right. 
So we've got the mages. Um, these guys... Give them a fire gem, and then they can cast... Us... Where are we? Phoenix power, and then fire stuff or blessings. Yeah, I just think fireballs. We'll just spam our fireballs. And, you know, cognizant of the, the fact that you will get a little bit of in the way of um, friendly fire, but that's okay. So Phoenix Power Fireballs, Bosh, there we go. These guys are going to power the spheres, lightning bolt. And everybody else is just set to hold and hold and fire, I think. I think with the long dead, we probably just want to get straight in there. Yeah, these guys want to hold an attack rear. See if we can get around the back. I don't know. I haven't actually pinged this province to see what's in there, but I don't think it's going to be anything too terrifying. Uh, if we end up with something really scary in there, then it could be quite amusing. <laughs> um, then, you know, we might get... Usually you can see, though, if there's a Titan or something in there, and it's like a level 3 province. And I can't remember if I actually got a level 3 one or not. Oh, what have we not searched here? Astral 2. Okay. Don't think he's going to find anything, but it's worth a try. Okay, and... Get this guy over here. Oh yeah, we'll have this. We'll have this uh, Scipio here in uh, Swineland or Swinland. Oh, we did we find anything? Oh no, it's just a throne. Sorry, I thought we'd find a. Uh, I thought I'd found a holy site, but I'm just being dense. Okay, let's get these guys moving this way. Oh, I might get some more Lars up this way if we can. Okay, did I want to put a thought a throne up a fort up here? Probably do, don't I? Get a palisades up there. Okay, that's going to be about it. Ah, oh, we got this. Uh, we got this battle here. Where do we go then? I think we take. I think we go into into the throne here. We got a lion queen. Phoenix power file shield, flaming arrows. Order skeletons. I want you to give one of your gems to Marcus here. I want you both casting Power of the Spheres. But I want you both doing Order Skeletons, I think. Now, I'm going to have these Histatus in line formation. And the Principes. Yeah, that worked well. I I think we should be okay here. These win these winter wolves will not be quite. It will not be as scary. Um. Oh. Actually, you know, I'm thinking. Phoenix power might. Uh, sorry. We might want. Flaming arrows, and the reason being. Yeah, the reason being is because um those wolves are and there's a, there's a lot of them. Look. Mainly winter wolves, right? Those wolves are ethereal, so they could kill. They could kill us if we haven't got something to deal with them. Um, so, yeah, we've only got one. We've only got one gem here, with the fire in the jar. So that's the gem for the uh, flaming arrow. So we can only do it once. Let's have let's him. Let's have him here, and we'll have these Hastatus using those, using the flaming arrows. Okay, let's see how that goes. It looks like a good plan. Um, Get an auger up here. Start getting some more mages down towards the front line, I'd say. Yeah, maybe down towards Marverni. Oh, we've got loads of these guys coming in. Okay. Let's, let's move all these guys down. We're going to need more troops um, eventually for that siege. Uh, Marverni are making troops. They're making cavalry. Okay, one more turn of that, so we get a decent cavalry. Oh, mind you, that's quite a lot of cavalry already. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, let's get let's get ten, and then we'll get a bunch of siege chaff as well. Let's build his status, so they're actually useful chaff. Let's have him wait. Now, uh, we could. Okay, we don't have the uh, construction paths yet. I'm going construction five next. Construction five is going to give us... 
the uh, creator magic items, which will give us the ability to get the skull staff. Once we've got the skull staff, we can start. We can get really, really good skelly spam, especially with guys like Luck. He's got this white mage here. He's got death four um, with a skull staff, which is you know big. That's what I consider to be kind of like powerful death, because <laughs> then you can throw a lot of skeletons out without uh, a very. I think horde of skeletons is what fifty. I think it's fifty fatigue. Let me check that. Uh, no, it's 40. So, and it's a death 2 spell. So you're reducing it down to 20 with 3 and 10. So you're basically casting it for 10 fatigue every round. And if you put a, some boots of reinvigoration on or something as well, or you have them in communion, you know, that's going to be a lot of, a lot of, a lot of horde of skeletons. That's like armies of skeletons. <laughs> you can just keep, keep casting it. And it's really cool. Okay. Let's start forging some magic items uh, to put on these thugs. Uh, the Burning Pearl's a nice one. The problem is it reduces the assassin patience, which means you've got more chance of uh, getting a bodyguard. Um, so, you know, a bodyguard coming in. But it does give you plus four attack with skill, so it's kind of, it's almost worth it. The Braces of Protection are a good one to put on a, uh, on a, uh, on an assassin too. Uh, what else have we got? I mean, any of the any of the magic items. These, for example, dragon helmets, all this kind of stuff. We got tons of fire mages, right? And you know, so being able to forge gear for the uh, we got so many gems as well. Like just being able to forge gear for assassins is quite easy. And you know, you don't want to put too much gear on an assassin because it gets expensive in gems. Even if you've got a lot of gems, you don't really want to be wasting them, right? But there's some cool stuff you can do with them. Uh, for example, can we get the Lucky, yeah, the Pendant of Luck. There you go. That's a good one to put on an assassin. It's going to cost us a bunch of glamour gems, but we've got some income now, so we can do it. Um, we've got defensive items, I think, with water. Where are we? Oh, we might we might need the next level. You know, but stuff like this, look, ice helmet. Going to give you decent protection and cold protection. The Ghost of uh, Gown is going to give you ore and more hit points. That'll do the job too. So yeah, I mean, there's, we can we can play with all this stuff, and because it's on single player, you know, it's not really, you're not gonna really, you're not really messing your game up if you waste a few gems like on some cool assassin plays. Uh, it's not, you know, the, the the difficulty level isn't that high that it should be a big problem. Okay, let's roll the turn on and see what happens. Okay, messenger has arrived from Turn and Og. We declare war upon your holy nation. Okay, so we're there, everyone's declaring war on us. So that's not good. Um, yeah, we're going to have to deal with that. So we've researched construction four. We're going for construction five next. Rukias successfully empowered himself in earth. So he is now earth two. And next, once we get up to earth, up to construction five, we can create the earth boots. And then we can go, he can go up to earth three. And then with a gem, you know, he can do earthquake and cool stuff like that. Um, Pals uh, where are we? Uh, Palacios cast astral projection. Let's go to the targeted province. There we go. It worked. So we can actually see what's in Turnanog now. Okay. Uh, we've got Furbog, mil Furbog militias, slingers, cushies, and crocodiles to Arthur Sorceress. Um, the arm appears to be commanded by Skolle, or Skolle the uh, she lord who radiates, excuse me, who radiates power. Uh, okay. So there you go. That's astral projection. To show you how it works. In it, you're reasonably safe casting it on Turn and Og. You don't want to be casting it on Marvel. Uh, on yeah, you can probably cast it on Machaka as well. Don't think they've got astral, have they? Yeah, you can cast it on Machaka as well, but you don't want to be casting it on anyone who's got astral. Okay. Um, let's see what else happened. Arcane probing. We found a star flower garden. Excellent. So more astral pearls. We got a ridiculous astral gem. Now these can be you can alchemize these into other gems, by the way. So if we really, really needed more death gems, for example, we could alchemize them at a rate of fifty percent. You know, two to one, basically. So you pay two gems, two astral pearls, sorry, and then you get one death gem. Uh, you know, kind of, kind of a bad deal, but sometimes you need to do it. Servius has cast contact La, arcane probing again, summon fire drake. There's a battle in Kimri. Here we go. Okay, so here come those wolves. Now we got a bit of a... Yeah, there's not that many of them, look. They are coming on the wrong side, though. We might have flaming arrows on this side. 
So these things are ethereal. Now they they don't have very great strength. They they're not going to be fighting very well in the in the summer because I'm pretty sure they've got yeah they've got the strength of the winter. Uh, it gets reduced hit points. Ah, okay. So yeah, they've got less hit points. Look, only by two hit points, but that's significant when you when when you're looking at ethereal stuff. Okay, we've got some cold bolts coming in. Uh, we've got an ice druid with fire shield. That's kind of amusing. And uh, we've got the voice of Li we've got a voice of lion here too. So he's just a nature mage. They've got and a kind of priest. Oof. Stasis took uh, took a bit of a cold bolt there. Yeah, these guys are getting frozen by these winter wolves. Now the um, armies of Machaka are coming in. Now they're not they're not particularly strong troops. These they're just Machaka warriors. They they're not bad. They've got the defense three because of the shield. Uh, but I think our Ermorian troops will will deal a lot of damage to them, particularly with flaming javelins. Looks like the Triarii are getting toasted on here on this side though. They're uh, they're struggling a little bit. However, we've got some. We've got uh, Long Dead filling the uh, filling the ranks and starting to come in now. Okay, yeah, looks like we we are actually beating these guys. Yeah, the the Ermorian troops really are some of the best in the uh, in the era, in the early age. They're just so they're uh, they're really really good. Their, their statistics are just really really high. Oh, look at this guy, limp and a battle flight. He's, he's got a, a limp and battle flight. Okay, there we go. We're getting uh, pummeled by magic from the back lines though. The ice druid. Now it looks like Ermor of uh, sorry, Machaka of Run. This guy's taking a nap, I think. Yeah, he's fatigued out. Can we kill him? No. We don't we'll get in there. Alright, let's have a look what happened with that battle then. Uh we lost five Astartus, four Principes, and eleven Triarius. Now the Triarius, you know, they're there to die, obviously. But they are a little bit more expensive, more difficult to replace. Like slightly slower than the others, but I don't mind. That's that's a good result for me. We killed a lot of troops, mostly militia, but the Manchaka warriors aren't bad. And uh, you know there was a bunch of you know summoned summoned units as well. So I'm pleased with that. There's a battle in Solian. Okay, it looks like we got attacked by uh, Turnanog. We've got to come up with a counter for Turnanog now. Yeah, we're not going to win this. They've got way too many troops, and they've got good troops as well. Looks like those animals ran though. Now we do. Oh, uh, ah, we've got a Pontifex. That's why. So we've got a. We actually got some uh, magic support here. Hopefully these troops will stand a little bit longer than you would. Then. Oh, they just nuke a bunch of our own troops. Okay, yeah, they've they've lost that. Pontifex escaped though, I think. Yeah, look, I mean, they, they had two She Champions and a She Lord, um, and a, a Bavon She as well. So we lost a Centurion. Um, our Pontifex managed to escape, though. Oh, oh this is Prov. No, that was just Province Defense. We're not going to get him back. Okay, I understand. Uh, Talito. Okay, so this is the throne. Here we go. Power of the Spheres going off. What have they got here? They've got a Wizard of the Stars. Oh, wow, okay. So Astral Mage 2, and he's got uh, Earth Magic 1. We've got a Wizard of Many Colours. Okay, and he's got Glamour in Air. And a Wizard of Many Colours, we've got Earth and Glamour. Wizard of Dark Arts, so we've got a Death and, and Fire. And he's uh, Death and Fire too. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of Wizards. Yeah, um... Should be okay here. I think I've got plenty. Oh, look at this. Wyvern's jumped in the back. Now our commander's in some trouble. Uh, Legatus, uh, sorry, Robigus. Uh, if our commander dies, this, this, oh, there he goes, look. Got killed by a javelin from his own troops. Hopefully these guys will continue on. Fireball's incoming. Oof, landed a bit short. Now most of our equitates to the sacred shroud are not blessed. That was the mistake I made. Look, I forgot to I forgot to bring a a priest to bless them properly. That's okay. They're still pretty useful troops. We've just got sheer numbers of cavalry, which should do the job. 
We're going to lose a lot more troops than I was hoping to. But that's okay. Plenty more where they came from. Yeah, these guys are actually blessed up. Some of them got blessed, some of them didn't. Okay. So, the Crystal Sorceress has got 10 kills. That's not bad. And the Flamins did well too. We found a, an enormous cauldron of broth. That's pretty useful. It might be useful in this province because I suspect it's a death province. Um, so, we lost 6 equitates of the Sacred Shroud. 12 were unhorsed. They still, look, 80 of them still got 219 kills. And most of them weren't blessed. These are really, really strong troops, man. And, uh, yeah, so... We killed one, two, three, four, uh, sorry, two, four, five, six, seven mages, basically. And uh, yeah, like a whole bunch of long dead and wolf tribe. Wolf tribe are not, are not, uh, di are not easy to defeat either. So that was a good battle. Ermor attacking into Bergamum. This is Machaka's province. Yeah, there's not much here, look. Just some province defenses, I was hoping. Oh, we got a good fireball there. Yeah, look, fireballs did some good work. Excellent. Uh, so that's what you really want. I mean, you're always going to get a few losses. But uh, yeah, you usually want your fireballs being on point. <laughs> okay, there's a battle in the Rusty Badlands. So uh, looks like uh, Turn and Ogre attacking in here as well. Yeah, just a little bit of PD. That's quite a big army of uh, uh, Tuatha warriors, look. These are sacred troops. Not blessed, though. Okay. So, uh, construction of fortress in Solion could not progress because the fort was besieged. Okay. Which one was that? Okay. The construction of the castle in Debrita is completed. Started to destroy the forts in Kimri. The walls are lightly damaged. Are under siege in Solion and the walls are damaged. Okay. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to deal with this. Yeah, we've got we've got some troops incoming. We might have to we'll have to go through Yeah, like that round go around that way, I think. With this force. Now, I don't know if this force is big enough to re Yeah, it's not bad. It needs mage support though. Definitely needs mage support. Let's get these guys here. They're not don't want to be preaching anymore. I think what we're gonna do is let's get them summoning fire drakes, I guess. Okay, he can't do fire drakes. Yeah, so we'll at least just try and get some um, something up there to fight when we actually break that siege. Now, uh, let's send in... Can one of your... Let me, I just remind myself of this. They're a part... They're a part that were not spreading dominion. One member of the Trinity, blah, blah, blah. Calling back part of the Trinity. Can they still... Uh, what I want to know is, though, when they're when they're separate, can they claim a throne? I guess the one way to do it is just send all three of them, just to be sure. Uh, we don't. We currently don't have a a prophet either. We do want to make. We want to prophetize one of our uh, guys. Here we go. Here's a law. So Benedictus the law. So look, uh, this guy's got nature two, earth one, water one. Now I don't know if that's their standard paths. Did we build a law? Uh, which one? Where else did we get one? Here as well. Yeah. So nature two, earth one water one that might be there i don't know if they get random paths now these guys if i remember right they can't move now they reduce unrest that's pretty good they give you a supply bonus which is really nice they've got recuperation which is good can they move yeah they can all right so they don't they don't i don't think they've got any of the homesickness rules can't see it yeah so these guys these are just a really good nature mage basically and we can, for example, with one of these, once uh, once we're up, the up to the next level, we can make a thought a vine staff, whatever it's called, uh, and then get them up to level three. And then we've got decent nature magic. I mean, already look, these guys. Let's go with nature. And they can com contact more lars for a start, so you can kind of get more of the lars out with them if that's what you want to do. Um, but yeah, yeah, these got these got some decent paths. And if you put look, you can summon Kitharonic lions. And th send those back at Machaka. <laughs> uh, swamp Drakes, you could go for. Um, yeah, all sorts of stuff. You just just need to make sure you've got the right paths. So, actually, what's stopping him?
Oh, it can only be cast in swamp. So well, that makes sense. So we could, if you want to swamp drakes, I guess you could go and put a, a lab up in a swamp and uh, go wild with that stuff. Okay. We don't have enough troops here really to break down this fort too quickly, but this is one of the thrones. Now, how close are we to winning? This is one, one thing I want to look at before we end the episode. We've got one throne so far, the Throne of Dreams, level 2. Now we've also got... Which throne is this one? That's the Throne of Winter. Yeah, it's a, throne, it's a level 1 throne. But these, ma these mages are going to be good, by the way. So they're worth having, the Mage of Winter. Now your Dominion does get cold. But it's worth it for the Dominion spread. And then you've probably got... So yeah, we're going to have this one too. This is the Iron Throne. That's two Ascension points. That's nice. This gives us the, the Adept of the Iron Order as well. Oh, look at that. So we got a really good uh, Earth Mage. So this is worth this is worth putting up a, uh, a, a at the very least, a temple. But you, I mean, sorry, a, a lab. You probably want to throw in it as well. It's just a shame it's right next to Ermor. Because uh, it's going to reduce the re resources that we'd get. Um, but yeah, you put up a, maybe put up a lab and just get a few of those guys out. They will plug into communions quite nicely, and yeah, they're a good researcher as well. They're old though. Yeah, really good researcher. Look, twenty three. All three orders study astral magic, but each specializes in one element. The Iron Order studies the element of Earth. I don't so the S, uh, metal orders are good at spell research. They really are. Look at that. So these would be, I mean, these would be, would they be cost effective? Uh, I wouldn't use them just for research, probably. Oh, we got 300 research points a month. That's not a lot, actually, for turn 41. Um, we probably want to be making more. Where are we? One of these. Yeah, we need to be starting uh, monthly forging on these things. So the Alquil. Now, I've only got four Earth Gems, uh, four, four Air Gems per turn. No, that was not an Alquil. Good job, I saw that. Um, oh, good job. I'm struggling today. Okay. Let's get Celestus. I think we're going to, we, we've got to start building some forces up here and start attacking into, um, you know, raiding into, Mar into Turninog. Because, yeah, we are, we're under attack now. We're actually, I think, we've probably got Machaka on the back foot for the time being, but we can't rest. So, yeah, I think we're, let's get some province defense up here. I am going to end the episode in a minute, guys, because I um, don't want the episodes to be going on too long. Yeah, I think I'll finish this episode later on, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Um, I hope you're still enjoying this, by the way. I'm I'm sort of prioritizing this one a little bit over the, over the Shadow Empire at the moment because I think this is closer to being finished, probably. And I want I I've got too many series on the go at the moment, so I, I really do want to finish this series if I can and get it finished. Um, I'm enjoying it though, so I'm in no hurry to end it. So yeah, but that's that's one of the reasons why you'll see this. You might have seen this, you know, being posted a bit quicker than Shadow Empire. All right, guys, catch you next time. Take care.